Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Peter from the Flatiron School. Today I'll be presenting uh, my first uh, blog. Um, as you see on the screen, um, I have uh, written my first blog on one of the more basic concepts of React. It's currently the curriculum that I'm learning about. So I felt like that this is something that I had a really good grasp on. Uh, upon choosing the topic, I kind of designed it for people that are first getting introduced to the topic of props. Um, that's why my title, as you see here, React Fundamentals, the Guide for Props. So for my presentation, I'll just be reading through my, through my blog, maybe uh, stepping aside to, to talk a little bit more in depth about some of these concepts. But for the most part, uh, let's just get started. Upon learning React, one of the more interesting ideas was that of props. If you have ever struggled with what they are conceptually, you are not alone. While challenging to get the swing of, I've come to realize that props are designed to make coding easier by them being what I call multi-use tools. Now, React is full of these multi-use tools with props being one of the core concepts that you'll need to become efficient. Uh, they're virtually used everywhere within React. So choosing this as a topic, I feel like would be really helpful for those who are just kind of lost and, and feel maybe a little bit overwhelmed by, by first understanding what a variable is and then moving into props, it could be a little bit jarring. Um, but what props essentially are, are customizable variables uh, that are passed down from a parent component to a child component. When a prop is created, it is created as a property of the child component while first being defined in a parent component. Uh, so to, just to demonstrate this, let's go step by step. Starting in our parent component, and it's frequently named app at the top most level, uh, we have to write some code that we want passed down. Uh, normally, this is some sort of data set, uh, whether it be an array or an object, but in this is a basic example, we are simply going to turn a single function and a single constant into props. So in this little bit of code I have here, you'll see that I have an, uh, a component named parent component, just for simplicity's sake as well as a function and a constant. Now, both of my functions have very basic, uh, uh, both my function and my constant have very basic uh, kind of a code within. Uh, the first one is console app logging the text, I will travel with prop one. And the second is my constant that's default text labeled, I will travel with prop two. And though I am console logging just some basic test, text, these functions and constants should be things that will be utilized by child components. The types of props that I most frequently see in this stage of my studying consist of arrays indicated by bracket notation or objects or arrays of objects even. Uh, so let's continue on. Uh, this is just the top part of my parent component. I wanted to kind of give you guys the full, the full image of what a full component will look like. So this being the same, we're also gonna be returning in, in the return, we're gonna be creating both components within this parent component. So we have child component one, where we're passing down handle console log, and we have child component two, where we are passing down default text. When creating a prop, we create a property of a component using the assignment operator and name our prop here as well. For most cases, I find calling prop by its origin name is the easiest to conceptualize especially when navigating through multiple components. So what I mean by that is, if you see here, I've named my property or prop in this case, handle console lock because the name of the function is handle console lock. I find this to be really useful, especially when navigating through multiple different branches of components to have that full understanding of, this is what I'm sending down. This is the data I wanna access. Um, finding a naming system that is clear to you as you code is important, and using, and using proper singular and plural pronouns will be critical when having to iterate through data. So be sure you know exactly the data type and what is contained as you progress forward with the application. Uh, once again, just understanding what you're sending down, having that clear uh, uh, understanding of, of the data and what's, and what's contained within that data. So in the child component below, I've kind of written out the, a very brief version of both of the child components that I created up here. Um, we explore how these props can be, can be displayed differently. So in child component one, we are passing down props as the parameter or argument of the child component. And we are defining what props is via a constant. 
and we're just sending it equal to props. This is a different way of destructuring, uh, a little bit different than what I see more frequently is the inline destructuring that we see in child component two, where instead of props, we swap out the word altogether for the curly brackets, for the abbreviated default text, um, and, and, and having the name of the prop in that fashion. So like I said, in these two examples, we see different ways of destructuring props that are passed down. And this is a great alternative, in my opinion, to using dot notation, which is normally how props are being referred to. So in this is for in a, in a child component one, props.handleconsolelog would be the, the way to utilize this inside of the child component and props.default text would be the way you would use it in com child component two. Proper destructuring is key to having others view your code and be sure to utilize that whenever is possible. Now, if you haven't noticed that props don't really do anything specifically, they primarily act as transportation vehicles for data and can either go up or down a component tree. Props can be iterated and interacted with as the original data type that it contains, which means that array methods will work on props that contain arrays and so on in that fashion. While simple, props can be of great use when you need to access data at different levels of the component tree. In the below example, we will see how props allow us to send down data as well as whole functions to be used at lower levels of the component tree. Um, so in this example, we import the child component to the parent component being app. We're sending down task data, a constant with, which contains an array and handle event, which is a function that contains just the console log data and th this event has been fired. In the return, we send down these things to the child component as event and data props. It is here that we see the value that props provides us. While the data is being declared in the parent component level, it is not used here. Both the function and the constant are passed down to be utilized in the child component as such. So in my child component here, uh, you see that I passed in props, I destructured, using that abbreviated destructuring method of event and data, setting it equal to props and having the event being called as an on click event and also creating uh, another child component within this child called one last child. Uh, in this final example, we pass down both the event function and the data constant as props to the child component where we invoke the event handler function on click of a button element. We also see that we are able to send down data down a le another level to another component utilizing the prop name and not the original. So what I mean by that is here we're sending down data equals to the property of data versus in the parent component, we sent down task data and named it data. Um, understanding the multi-component use of props is essential to becoming a successful React developer information flow is very much a tool to be harnessed and covering these basic concepts in depth will pave the way to a deeper and more to pave the way to deeper and more complex tools.